Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School for Life. Well, once again, I'm wearing the hoodie. <laughs> and it doesn't significate anything. Anything other than it's freezing cold out here. There is a significant wind as the vortex is uh, approaching Toronto. And we're feeling the effects of it. This is whipped up wind, something fierce. Uh, anyways, it is 23 hours and 7 minutes into the uh, 18th day of November 2021. And we're beginning with an odd title called Greek and Syrian ADOS and the Elites. And then it has to do with uh, been watching that but because Lionel's been off. I would have been watching Lionel as well, but Yvette Carnell has come back online. And she's still pretty much a diehard Democrat to a certain degree. Uh, we'll call her an old school Democrat who believes in government. And this is part of, what I could say, her problem. And a large chunk of the Democrats who are in the inner cities, uh, who have felt abandoned and left out and sort of... They're angry at the situation that they've been left behind. And that's the reality. They have been left behind. But it's not because they had to be left behind. It's because slavery begins in the mind. And see, ADOS is that, the American descendants of slavery. And why do I say Greek and Syrian uh, ADOS, American descendants of slavery or of slaves? Because the American global the global situation, the, there was an American imperial system that was global that included Greece, Syria, the we call the Asiatic Greeks. I'm an Asiatic Greek. I'm not European Greek. And there was a different sense of reality for the Asiatic Greeks than there was for uh, for, for, for most of the so-called Western Empire. The Western Empire, in terms of how it, its structures were set up and laid out, was basically a separation of the elite from the people. That the, the people down below really didn't matter. It was the elites above who were the kingmakers. They were the ones who were going to decide what was going on. And this is going to actually be seen in Edward Bernays. The, when they were talking about creating the the, the work, creating the LARP, creating the, the, the reality in, in terms of manufacturing or engineering consent, uh, they understand. Edward Mays comes out and talks about himself. About talks about the control of elite in society. It is the social engineering experiment, and this comes directly from Sigmund Freud. It was directly used by Anna Freud uh, for much of uh, much of the uh, sort of uh, decades from FDR all the way up into well, basically Nixon. Uh, you had uh, the control of Anna Freud. It was only in the 1970s that Anna, Anna Freud's control slipped, and it, and, the, and the psychology ended up uh, the, the the fulcrum of psychology ended up with Ram Dass, and you had the sh the shift towards this. Uh, it was the Ram Dass was the beginning of wokeness. If you want to know where woke came from, it's from you look up Ram Dass. It's R A M. D A S S, Ram Das. You want to know who he is and how he's connected to Timothy Leary? This is this is the this is the one you'll be able to find. If you find enough information, you'll be able to find who he's connected to, how he connects to Oprah, how he connects to Obama. And once you understand that, you'll understand the line of wokeness, how, how wokeness emerges in in the United States, because everything else should everything sort of comes off of the work that Ram Dass had done in terms of ending the era of the, for, the called the Fordian era. Something's going on. We got some cloud, we got some open sky. Sound like there's a train coming in. Uh, yeah, we've got the sky opening up here. We've had we've had systems of clouds come through, followed by clear sky. 
And I said, when there's clear, clear sky, uh, what you end up with is uh, um, a larger sound, uh, a larger sound footprint, uh, because the echoes are are long. The, the larger the space for the echo, the louder the sound. The echoes, and this is why waveguides work. They amplify the sound naturally. Uh, and so I was sort of looking at this and pondering this reality sort of thing. Uh, anyways, Ram Dass is really the, the, the sort of the beginning of the end of Anna Freud. However, this is where Edward Bernays comes into, into the question. You would initially think this would be a bad idea because what happens is that in this period, same time period, this is where Jung comes into his his own his own, but Jung is an offshoot in many ways a distraction from what, what Freud was doing, particularly Edward and Freud. I'm talking about through Edward Bernays. Edward Bernays didn't do much of the work. It was Freud who did the work, and Edward Edward Bernays simply took the work, the theoretical work done by uh, Sigmund Freud, and applied it in uh, the, what we we'll call PR, public relations, uh, anything you see in the news. Uh, he it's Edward Bernays. He is the one who created the work. He is, in many cases, the story master. There's a puppet master. The people control the puppets. And then there are those who are the story master. They create the story, the narrative. And Edward Bernays was the person who created the narrative. This is why he becomes so important. These other People will toss off other names. But if you look and sort of see how these other names relate to Edward Bernays, you'll start beginning to understand that Edward Bernays is the key focal point. And these other people were used to sort of pull attention away from Edward Bernays because this is where they don't want you to look. And these are the the the, the they is these are the elite and those who protect the elite elite. The, what happens is that the, 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 the protection of the elite is because the elite will take some of the people from some of the people who appeal and appeal enough to them that they say, okay what we're going to do is we're going to make you part of us. We're going to give you a sliver, a section. They'll, they'll, they'll come out with a red or going to create the story. Yo, oh, don't worry, you're going to become part of us. But they never really do become part of us. They give you some, they give you what they call the trinkets, the toys. They give you enough to say, ah, I am something special. They give you status. And then that status puts you in league with them. And then what you do afterwards, on your own, in order to protect your status, is protect the elite. This is what a lot of the Paul, you know, Yvette Carnell cannot, can't understand why are there so many these people who were who are Democrats, blacks, who are in Congress, and they don't care about the, uh, the about the uh, people because they've been elected to the elite, they've been given these status, this, these positions, these sliver of goodness that these elites have, and they want to protect it. They don't want to lose what they have, and so there's a protection of status. And so the blacks that are in Congress, you know, the, the NAACP and all these, so on the Black Caucus, they're going to protect their, their status. They're, these these are vassal kings. They exist in a vassal state. They're not part of the state in terms of the elite. They're part, they're simply a vassalage. The vassalage were kings and aristocracy elected and ordained by the elite to create the front line, to separate them, to separate, th there's the elite, there's the front line, those are your priests and so on and so forth, these are the the vassal kings, this is where they are, and the people, are people. Well, so let me just do this because I didn't really have it done right, up top are the elites, there is a line they create by electing people into the vassalage states that become the front line, and in these vassalage states, Sorry, that's okay. There are people in these vassalage states who are elected to higher offices. And it's their job to protect the elite without actually protecting, without stating they're protecting the elite. And they do this because they're interested in their own status. If you start protecting your own status, you're now protecting the elite because you're part of the vassal state. And so that's what happens. This is what happens. You now have a creation of the vassal state. This is what government is. Government is the protection of the... Va they're the vassal. They're the protection of the elite. 
And so they, and, and again, they're not protecting the elite directly, they're protecting indirectly because they're protecting their position, they're protecting their status, the vassal state. And that's that becomes the defensive wall of people like, uh, like well, let's say George Soros and, and the ones who are at, at the top there, the ones who have the money, uh, the billionaires, they become, they become the, they're the elite and the vassal states are there to protect them. And anyone elected to office, whether Democrat or Republican, this is why it's, the work is on the left and the right side. There is no reality to this. Uh, the elite will always be in control. And, then, and this is historic. You go back and history, see where this structure comes from. And you'll see it's always there. doesn't matter how far back you go into history. Even, even in, when you use archaeological tools to go back, way back into history, you'll still find you'll have the elite elected by God or some deity. You'll have the vassalage, the vassal states that protect the elite from the, uh, from the masses. That's the, the, that's the line of separation. And because the vassalage is will understand that they are at, in the service of the va of, of the elite. The vassalage, in order to keep their position, in order to keep the good stuff that they have, will automatically, on the room, without being told, protect. Because they're going to protect their status, and in protecting their status, they act as a blockage uh, for the elite to prevent people from getting up to the top. This is actually going into deep history. <clears throat> This is why the early Christians in Christ was executed. What was, what was as a rabbi, what was, and this is something I stumbled on today. It took me three hours of, of just sort of perusing around. And I stumbled on something in a Talmudic scholar site. It was an article describing how the leaders, the, the, the head rabbis, should rule within the synagogue. And it talks about the Judaic structure. And again, there's the elite. There is the vassal state, which becomes the, the rabbinical the rabbinical class. This is your priestly class. And then there are the people below. And they fully believe in the structure. And they work to protect it. And so what happens? Christ comes along and says, you don't need the structure. You're directly connected with God. You, you are the image of God. Right? We are created in the image of man. This is a big problem. If you, if you have someone coming down and saying, hey, everybody is like this, even the people down below, the harlots and this and that, they're, they're all part of God. you got a big problem now because all of a sudden your authority, this is from the vassals, is now threatened. Because if everybody is equal, then why do you ever need a vassal state? And it became a threat to it. This became anti-establishment. The thing is, is that what made the Christians so powerful <clears throat> is because they never fought back. The original Christian, mar Christian martyrs never fought back. <clears throat> so what the people would hear, because this, this would, would go on all over the place. And they wouldn't be able to kill everybody, so people would escape. And then they'd say, oh, they went into a Christian town. They whipped out everybody. And they asked, well, why? Because they're an enemy of the state. Well, what did they do? Nothing. <laughs> and then they'd, they'd take them up to the forums. They'd take them to the to the, the circuses, the Roman circuses, where they would execute people. This was, execution was a public spectacle. And as they saw, and the, the crimes are read, all these particular, and this is why you have the crucifixion of Christ. You had uh, two thieves on the cross. These are Crucifixion was the the penalty for the lowest form of criminal. So the, the criminals on the either left or right of Christ were pretty bad criminals. Yeah, here's Christ, and what was his, what was his crime? He was saying he was the king of the Jews. He was on he was hanging from the cross for blasphemy. Well, what did he say? He said they were all equal. This was this was his sin. This is why he was crucified. And this is why I have a problem with. The, those who call themselves uh, uh, anarchists, because the anarchists, whether they know it or not, are actually acting for the state. If you're an anarchist and you're watching this, you do not protect anarchy. You're not an anarchist. You are a tool for the establishment. This is how the establishment says to the people, and they create the fear, 
You see what's going on in, 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 in Wisconsin? You see what's going on in Portland? You want that to happen to you? Then you're going to behave. The anarchists become the control mechanism. If there was no anarchy, there would be no control from the elites. Now, I understand this. The Democratic Party was never set up to free people. The, the Democratic Party was the control. They were the imperialists. They simply used the rhetoric, the ideas of freedom. And this comes out perfectly in Dostoevsky's uh, Brothers Karamazov. There's a chapter called The Grand Inquisitor. And what happens? The Grand Inquisitor says... We're going to sell them slavery as freedom. Now, I'm going to tell you the slavery. They're going to tell you it's freedom. You're fighting for your freedom. This is what you hear from the anarchists. But what do you see all the time? This is what, what Yvette Carnell that the, the, that the people down at the bottom, the poor, and this is most of the blacks, they're getting poorer and poorer. Look at the inner cities. Have they ever, it doesn't matter how much infrastructure bills have gone on. Obama did this uh, did infrastructure bills for eight years. I think it was twenty trillion dollars that he did infrastructure bills. The inner cities got worse, not better. Understand this: that the Democrats, these causes, do not carry out care about uh, the bottom, the people at the bottom. Why? Because they've created a vassal state. And that vassal state, the elected people who were count, city council, uh, governors, your president, these people are all working as vassalage. They're the, they're the protective line, and they're going to work to keep their own positions. They're not going to care about the people. Matter of fact, who pays all the taxes? We're going to get reparations. This is what this is what this is what um, as you see the, the, this whole vassalage thing. It's global. The Americans were part of this global vassalage system. They're, they ha you have the American elites. The Americans were part of, of the elite system, but they also had their vassalage system globally. They had them in Greece. They had it in Syria. This is why you have the United States in, in the Middle East. The reason why the United States is currently in the Middle East, still in Syria, still in Iraq, they're still actually in Afghanistan. Just the old, what we call the overt troops are there. And all of a sudden, as the overt troops pull out, all of a sudden ISIS pops up. Well, who do you think ISIS is? And this is, again, from the American narrative, from what you see on TV, and even in the social media, the narrative is created that this is for us, that they're doing this for the people. But what happens when the taxes go up? Well, we see food prices go up. We see housing prices go up. Look at the inflation that everyone's on. Empty shelves for Christmas. Why do you think that is? And where did all these trillions of dollars that were, were, that were paid out go to? That it's gone. Did any of the people at the bottom ever see this? No. And who pays for the, if you If you have uh, reparations, who's going to pay for the reparations? You are. The people at the top, the vassal state and the, and the elites, they're not going to pay because they're, they're already exempt from the, They're already removed from the system. When they talk about, when they talk about, you know, and this is what Warren Buffett comes up for the Democrats and says, oh, we're going to make the rich pay. He's already, he's already removed his, his taxes, his money from the system. So he's not going to get taxed on it. He's not worried about getting taxed on it. His stated income, this is why he's paying, his secretary pays more. He pays a dollar a year in income. This is, his registered income is a dollar a year. He could declare more. He could sort of come out and sort of, here's everything, but he doesn't do that. Same thing with George Soros. Same thing with the uh, the one who originally set up the Democrat, Democrat, uh, sort of the Democratic Party. The real power house behind Clinton was Mark Rich. He was uh, head of uh, World Dot Shell. Go find out who World Dot Shell is, and you'll begin to start putting the pieces together. And I think these systems don't. I think even though these systems are broken up into Israel, uh, the United States. Uh, 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 Saudi Arabia and so on and so forth that uh, what we call the Western Sphere and Saudi Arabia is part of the Western Sphere. They all have the same particular view of the, the, the elite on top, the vassal state in the middle, that's your defensive line, and the people down below. The people are always separated, the people are always expendable, and they're the ones who are going to pay for everything. They, they farm people. You're the animals. You're the cattle and the sheep. 
Not because you simply follow along, because they they created a word that allows you to think that you're in control. You, the, the, the thought of slavery has been removed from you. If the Democrats actually understood what was going on, if the anarchists actually understood what was going on, and how they were actually a tool of the establishment, they wouldn't be doing what they were doing. Because right now they're giving, they're giving the control to the establishment. Yvette Carnell, this is again for you, if, if you're watching, if you ever see this. Your target isn't the government. The target is companies like Disney, Universal, the entertainment companies who use the stories of African Americans, of, of Americans, the black Americans, the disadvantaged, use this and have actually benefited from slavery. They, as a matter of fact, if you look at how Disney creates its film and supported governments who will tax other people that created a sort of a, a debt slave situation so that their movies, the animation community, this is what they did with Korea. Why do you see at the end of all these movies you see a, a Korean company or a Japanese company as part of the animators because that's the slave labor because the government is paying the wages for these people. Where does the government get the money from? They go back to the people and tax the people for that money. In other words, they're slaves. So who is an who is an American descendant of slaves? The entire world. ADOS is global, but your targets are also global as well. This is Disney. These are the entertainment companies because if it's intellectual property and people have to pay for intellectual property, then you have reparations coming to you based on the intellectual property, your royalties based on that from Disney. Go after Disney. Go after Universal Studios. Go after Warner Brothers. I, I, I mean, go after, go after these people who have money, who are in deep pockets, and let them pay. But I guarantee you, you're going to have a real fight because this is where the target is. And as soon as you start, you, you, as soon as you're aiming for the right target, you're going to get hit hard. I mean, the thing is, is why do you, think you have all these people who are elites in, 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 on the leftist side supporting what's going on right now? Because they're all getting paid. How many, how many, how many of the people on the protest line know how much their professors who are controlling these, who are who are part of the vast legislative state. How much are these professors getting? Look to see how much your professor is getting paid. For, for saying, oh, you got your right, you need to stand up for your rights. This sort of reimagining of society based on their social understanding, their social science. But it's complete bullshit. They make their money based on their popularity. The more popular they are, the more people falling and doing these demonstrations, the more money they get. They make money from this. The whole thing of Antifa and Black Lives Matter, I mean, why, why did this person get the mansion the way they got it? Hi. Uh, my. They got the mas mansions because they're part of the vassal state. They were, they were invited in. Here's your portion of the vassal state. You're going to protect us because if you want to keep your mansion... You want to keep your house, you want to keep your car, or whatever you got from them. And this Obama has his position at the head of Netflix and all the money he got. Same thing with, you know, his daughters and, and, and his wife. They're going to protect their status. They're going to protect what they have. And so they, they, they at least never have to worry about protecting themselves because you've got all these people in the vassal states Protecting them, and of course, these these people in the vassal states, in the, in the vassalage section, they have their minions, who who benefit and are happy with what they have, and they're going to protect their own interests. And in protecting their own interests, you've got to have layers of defense before you get to the elites. You will never ever get to the elites through the government. The vassal, the governments will always be vassal states. The only way that I've seen from my uncles who were child laborers is to forget the government and figure out how to work without the government as much as possible. Uh, you have to be independent of the government. And the, and the first thing you have to do is free your minds from slavery. 
the term ADOS is what's holding you down. The more you think like a slave, the more you think like a victim, the more you're going to be a victim. You have to break yourself of this. This is about freeing your mind first. That's your first step. Stop thinking like a slave. We are Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School for Life.